Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I've got a new rocket here and as you can tell from the name of the payload our goal is going to be to get into orbit around the moon and after that also impact the moon. So we'll take the lunar orbiter uh, contract and the lunar impactor contract, we'll get into orbit and then we'll deorbit it to smash into the moon. Uh, to do that, what we have here is a tiny little probe here. This is, uh, you know, a 0.2 ton probe with this Octo 2. Uh, it's got this probe core which limits us to 0.2 tons. And what it uses is just the RCS system with hydrazine and no other thruster. It's just going to be using the RCS to get into orbit around the moon and then deorbit itself. It's got about 1,100 meters per second of delta V. It does not have enough battery life or solar panel to last forever. It's got about two days worth. But until it reaches the moon, it'll be hooked up to this stage. And this stage does have enough solar panel to supply itself, I believe. Um, unless something else happens. Uh, if we take this off here, you can see here uh, generating 0.18 and draining 0.19. And you can see all the solar panels are on one side. They're actually balanced by this antenna here. Uh, anyway, uh, so we've got these antennae. They are uh, action group two, action group one, and so this this in theory could remain in orbit between Earth and the Moon, and continue to supply us with with stuff, but uh, with communication support. Okay, and uh, in this tank, it's got extra electric charge. And in this tank, it's got the hydrazine for its own little RCS thrusters. Otherwise, it is using the XASR as its engine. And that burns for 7 minutes and 54 seconds. Not technically legal. I don't know what's going to happen. Because uh, they're only supposed to burn for 2 minutes and 5 seconds. But test flight has not been t test flighting much. So I don't know. In And basically, it's like I could put on like eight of these generic one kilonewton thrusters, but these aren't very efficient. They've got a vacuum ISP of 187, and then I think it's like 198 if you uh, up the tech level. Uh, we've only got tech level one right now. So, I mean, uh, I, another possibility would be to have like sets of error B. We'll have two lighting and then another two and then another two um, if we want to go real tedious about it, but uh, they don't weigh that much. And they don't cost that much either. Actually, uh, how much does the one kilonewton thruster cost? Sixty. Now, uh, if you're asking why don't we use, just use the RCS thrusters here, well, that's a little bit underpowered. Well, it's a lot underpowered. It take forever. And besides that, uh, it's also not got the ISP of the XASR. So anyway, I've got one XASR. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Now below that we have the launcher, the stalwart. I've called it. And it's got many stages. <laughs> it's got uh, three core stages and then four boosters. Um, let's start from the top. So here we have uh, a 5 minute and 30 second stage with the RD0105. And uh, that's the best I could do on that. Uh, and, you know, this thrust weight ratio is really low. I'm a little bit worried about it. It takes a long time for this to get to, into orbit. I don't know if we will have enough time. We'll see. Uh, we have the Delta V. Actually, the stalwart has a capacity of about 5 tons. We're only trying to launch 3.8 into orbit. Um, after that, we have the probe, co uh, the core here. If it'll let me click it. Guidance unit, early 2 meters. And that allows for control of 120 tons. And then this is the Vanguard stage. We have two Vanguards. I tried out putting six AJ-10s, but that did not work out so well. Uh, it didn't give me enough thrust weight ratio, and this about has about as much punch, uh, so that's good. We've got the settling rockets, as you can see, but I'm relying on the vernier thrusters on the on the vanguards to do the rest of the work. I hope there's not going to be any overheating due to the clustering. That's another issue. So yeah. And then at the bottom what we have is uh, LR89s all the way. So and we don't have any other tech levels for it. We don't have any upgrades for it. 
And so a total of six LR-89s, four of them on boosters. The boosters have their own controller because it is obviously more than uh, 120 tons, and these are the Gans Unit Early 1 meters, each allowing for 45 tons, and they just go away once these decouple, obviously. I've got separation motors here, and I'm hoping that's a good position for them. Uh, yep, that's an open question. Uh, also an open question is whether putting two of the LR-89s here is going to cause a heating problem. The LR-89 on the core stage is burning for 3 minutes and 35 seconds, which according to this is its limit. So I've uh, set that at its limit, uh, 215 seconds here. So that is how I decide on that. Uh, you can see healthy sea level thrust, uh, maximum thrust to weight ratio 4.6. So that's also reasonably healthy. The burn time on the Vanguard is also at its maximum. So this is pretty much maxed out on its timing. And it's going to take a while to get to orbit. So that's a little bit of a worry, especially on the final stage here. We want to have a good amount of time to apoapsis this before we get to that stage with the RD-0105. Otherwise, uh, it's kerosene and liquid uh, oxygen all the way, too. And it's worth pointing out. Uh, everything is kerosene and liquid oxygen. So, except for the probe. I mean, the the launcher, so the stalwart, is kerosene and liquid oxygen. Yep. Well, there we have it. I don't know what else to say except uh, we'll have to build it. It's got to take 85, uh, more than 85 days. I got the fairings off. Uh, our build time, we really need to work on that. Now we also have the satellite contract, remember we were trying to toss a satellite into a particular orbit to fill that contract. So we'll take a look at that, probably that will be done first because of the build time of this rocket. Okay, and note uh, 16,000, you might be wondering whether I thought about using SRBs instead of these S uh, LRBs, and the answer is yes, I tried, and it didn't work out. Uh, yep, uh, uh, the, the cost... Actually, uh, if I try to size the SR, the SRBs are actually limited for us right now. Uh, we are limited to uh, 1.1 meters. Oop, come on, resize. See, it stops at 1.1. So we would need a lot of those SRBs to actually give this the delta V it needs and the boost it needs. And um, besides that, the cost was actually more than this arrangement. And it wasn't uh, crazy like it used to be, you know, we had crazy costs with the SRBs, that seems to have been fixed. But this arrangement still seemed to give us the, the delta V we needed and the thrust weight ratio we needed without being over, overly expensive. Another thing is that we used to use these RD-103s as our booster engines on previous rockets, uh, but you'll notice its cost is 850. The cost of the LRA-9 is 800, so it's cheaper, and also it's much, 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 much more efficient. Uh, the engine ISP on this is 216 sea level, 244 vacuum. This is 248 sea level, 282 vacuum. I haven't unlocked the R7s. Um, presume, uh, but they're bulkier, you see. This is a 1 meter engine, these are 2 meter engines, and this, uh, even yeah, this variant is about the same power, a little bit lower power, but better efficiency at vacuum than this. The downside is it's heavier, it's physically larger, so it can't be clustered like I have on the core stage there. And of course, these boosters are also larger, and so I'd have to make that bigger as well. Um, they look quite different. Also, the I think the vectoring range on this is better. Yeah, it's got a vectoring range of 5 degrees. These only have 1.5 apiece. So, lots of things to think about. I haven't unlocked those yet. I don't know what they they cost compared to this. I think this is probably cheaper. Okay, so here we have ComTub2 uh, with 46 days left before it's complete. And the Lunar Orbiter on the Stalwart, 170 days, but it'll move up to the first position, of course. Uh, otherwise, we don't have any rockets that we need to use. Uh, the two satellite contracts are done in 252 days, so we probably need to line up another ComTub 2 or something better. Maybe maybe something on the stalwart instead. Let's take a look at our contracts to see how much we actually get for those, and whether it's worth using the stalwart at its 16,000 fund cost. 
Okay, so this one, well, this one has a completion of 30,900. It's, it's the high orbit one. The one we tried last time was this low orbit one that had a retrograde orbit and it's uh, specifics. That's 32,000, so it's worthwhile to use the stalwart if we want to. Uh, not the most efficient possibility, but it, it could be done. So that's interesting. Other contracts we have, science data from space around Earth, we should probably just go ahead and take that. Um, the sounding rockets, things that I'm not confident actually work. Suborbital spaceflight again, I guess we can do the second Mercury mission, but we'll wait until we actually have that lined up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, X-planes they still want to... Very, very interesting accuracy. <laughs> uh, very... Somebody forgot to round those numbers in the code there, I think. Um, so here we have Lunar Flyby uncrewed, uh, Lunar Impactor uncrewed, and and uh, Lunar Orbit 1 uncrewed. And so we'll be able to do all of those. Unless there's some detail that I don't see. Yeah, we should be able to do all of those. But I'll wait until we're close to being able to launch the rocket before picking them up. Well, it says expires in 19 hours. I don't really believe that. I'm sure it'll pop up again. Maybe I should just take just take it just in case. Yeah, let's take the risk. Let's go ahead. We'll take the risk. Venus flyby is ready here. They actually want us to put specific uh, orbits. I mean, sorry, satellites into specific orbits around Mercury, which is dubious, uh, especially considering that kind of advance. Uh, I suspect these are the default contracts getting muddled. A Venus flyby is more possible here, so that's good. Uncrewed moon landing, that's the next step. Successful re-entry we still haven't done yet, I have to remember that. We gotta try to send a goo container up and retrieve it, though we probably need a satellite constellation first. Then, you know, these, these two contracts will help us start that out, and hopefully more contracts after that. Okay, so that's the plan. In terms of our research, we've got 79.7 funds. I mean, uh, sorry, science points. I'm all over the place when it comes to coming up with words today. Small inline reaction wheel. Well, that sounds really helpful, <laughs> I have to say. Docking port for propellant only. Okay, that's, that's okay. We really don't need a Saturn instrument unit yet. Hmm, and lots and lots of RCS, thrust, RCS thrusters. Well, we're not really at the limit of RCS. Um, I think we are already researching survivability. Let me just check. Yeah, yeah, it's, it will unlock in infinity days. Thank you very much. I'm um, pretty sure we're unlocking that one as well. And basic construction. Let me just check. Yeah, already being researched just doesn't like to show it here sometimes that is uh, potentially interesting what I really need is you know how I've got the two Vanguard engines there what I really need is some engine with about 200 to 400 kilonewtons of thrust and uh, good for vacuum ISP that's really what I'm looking for this uh, is a little bit short of that obviously though it is an interesting little engine pressure fed doesn't say anything about relights. Uh, since it's pressure fed, it might just not have any limit. That might be worthwhile. The Kestrel engine, 20 ignitions. That This has better vacuum ISP. I don't think I'd need more than 20 anyway. But it's not an RP0. <sighs> ah, now this is more like it. This is this is more like it. Two ignitions only, but it's got the right thrust, and it's got the good vacuum ISP. Okay, let's let's have stage combustion be a thing that we attempt, and we get the upgrade points for that, so that's good. And I guess with forty science, maybe we'll aim for this reaction wheel. That'll help a lot, I think. Now I've got uh, saturatable reaction wheels. That's a mod. So, I don't know how that actually works out for us. It's got capacity there. If you can see, um, capacity 1 kilonewton meter second. So, I don't know what that means, but, hmm. 
Maybe I should avoid that for now. We can continue using our tiny little RCS thrusters for all the business. Then again, is there anything else worth unlocking? Let me check that I'm unlocking this one. Yeah. Well, we could finally get a capsule. <laughs> We've been using that uh, other thing. Yeah, maybe we should get this capsule. Just to be legit about things. So now we have some upgrade points. And I think the most pressing thing was to... Wow, 29 signs per year from 27.5. Maybe I should try that. But uh, how about also a point here? Okay. We need many more upgrade points, but we can't get it because it takes so long to unlock stuff. Okay. Right. We've got a long time before any of these come up. But let's proceed. Okay, here we are. And let me try and line up with that target orbit this time. See if we can do it properly. Um, okay, that's the higher one. It's this light blue one. Looks like we're not too far off, are we? Have to go around this way. I forget what the... Uh, let, let's time warp until we hit it over here. Okay. That's close enough. I think we could start out the launch. By the time we get turned around and kill our existing momentum due to the rotation of the planet will probably be matching up with it or not too far off okay let me make the calculation for our launch azimuth okay I get 283.5 so yeah that sounds what like what I did last time so 284 okay well here we go again this time we seem to be lined up a little bit better. Maybe I should time up just a little bit more. Okay, and our our target longitude of ascending node to let's say 214. So 146 148.6 and 214. Okay. Throttle up. SAS on. Get some distance. Ignition and launch. Gonna hand over to Smart ASS right away. Okay, well, longitude of sending node is going up, inclination is going up, so numbers trending in the right direction. Okay, 10 seconds till boosters are out. Okay, booster set. Okay, boosters are off and all is well. First stage continuing. Now, obviously, you probably shouldn't be launching a rocket like this from Cape Canaveral. We probably should have picked Vandenberg. Uh, because we're obviously crossing over land. Yeah. Forgot about that. <laughs> I, sh I should remember that next time. Fortunately, I think this stage will end up in the over the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, I've got to switch over. All right, set. Okay, Vanguard is good. And fairing set. Looks good. I think I said 148.6 and 214 on the longitude of ascending node. Now the height, uh, 243, 231. But I have to have the right time to apoapsis for the five minute stage that we've got up there, so. Okay, switching over to SAS. Set. Ignition. Okay. It continues. Uh, 
we, we have enough on this stage to get to orbit. I should just go for orbit in this case. Uh, it's uh, very close though, very close. We might have to finish orbit with uh, one kilonewton thruster. And we'll probably have to lower our orbit a little bit to get into the correct orientation. Seems like I should tilt south a little bit. Okay, longitude of ascending node is about 2 degrees off. Inclination is about 0.3 or so. Okay, I'm aiming to hit apoapsis with a minute left in the stage time, I think. We're pretty much at the target longitude of ascending node, maybe a few minutes off. And target inclination, probably about 0.12 degrees off. That's that's the target longitude of ascending node right there. So I'm guess just gonna get around here. Okay. I think we can just go ahead and RCS and set. Okay, we are in orbit. Now wait till 2.31, I think it was. Okay, a little bit too much. But I think uh, the RCS can adjust that for us. Okay, 2.31. That should be close enough. Longitude of ascending node, we're at uh, 213 point eight right now and inclination we're at one forty eight point let's round it off and say five so we're point one off there point one off there and we really just need to dip our apoapsis I think so let's go to periapsis and then bring our apoapsis down to two forty three and then we should be ready now uh, we're we're on the nighttime side I've got ambient light adjustment right now so that's why it looks so bright but uh, yeah, once we get to the daylight side, we'll also see how it's recharging. And looks like actually generation is okay. A uh, uh, time warping had that on low power mode, but uh, if we orient properly, it looks like okay. And let's not waste our oh, we have no connection, so it's just gonna waste our CS a lot. Oh, caps lock seems to work. Okay, well I'll have it on caps lock then. Okay, we have connection now. Uh, okay, so let me make a plot for how to get into the right orbit. Say in a substantial amount of time. Uh, problem is if we wait until where I've got the node there, even though that might be a good position to do it, we're probably not going to have communication there. So we'll do a two-stepper. We'll uh, bring the apoapsis down and then bring periapsis up separately. Okay, 248. No, sorry, 243. Oh, it's already accepted it. Um, all right, if it's going to accept it, it's going to accept it. I'm not going to complain. Okay. So we've done that. Let me uh, clear all these up. This is just uh, stage recovery. Stage recovery works here. There, there's another install where it doesn't work so well. I don't know why. My, I've been sh testing a shuttle with uh, Realism Overhaul. And stage recovery doesn't like to read that the boosters are recovered. Or not. I mean, even if they're destroyed, it should say. Well, it's in an orbit. And now I want it to orient so that it gets the best possible recharge. So let's do the whole north-south thing, I guess. Okay, well, uh, ComTub2 has a good recharge. Uh, the controller can go into low power mode. So, I mean, if we actually see the consumption during time warping, 
it's only 0.02. So actually, this is a very permanent satellite, capable of recharging itself at a decent pace. Though, uh, it sometimes loses connection, especially since it's going this way around. It's gonna be not quite as useful as I would like, but hey, it's up here. Alright, so we've done that. Let's go back to the Space Center. Now, we have this other satellite contract, and it's in a higher orbit, but that orbit is a prograde orbit. So we're not gonna lose as much, you know, going backwards. I think we'll try using the same satellite, the same ComTub2. And we'll see how that works out and whether it can reach that orbit. If it can't, then we'll have to come up with something else. Uh, I can do the sense data from space around Earth right now. But uh, maybe some of the other instruments that we're putting on the lunar probe would be a little bit better. I think uh, the barometer will probably just get a zero reading on. So we'll wait for the lunar orbiter before trying to get the science data from space around Earth. Looks like the lunar orbiter will still complete first, even if we move ComTub2 to the top. That'll take 63 days, whereas the lunar orbiter is already sufficiently underway that it will be completing first if we keep it there. So that's what I'll do, and uh, we'll try that out. That's going to be interesting. Now, you might wonder why I'm not spending for upgrades. You know, I can buy another upgrade point for 10,000 funds. That's because I'm a little bit worried about the loss if I fail these, so I'm being very cautious and I don't want to have a repeat of the situation now I know I can rush build stuff we'll, we'll have that in store for when we need it but uh, just in case I fail something like I have before I want to make sure that I don't run out of funds okay no more of that okay so we have a lunar orbiter ready for rollout but I think I'm gonna queue up another one and put a barometer on it the reason being first of all the whole lunar trip is gonna take a few days and second of all, if we put a barometer on it, it could double in case this comm tub doesn't work. Because the comm tubs require barometers, I think. Let me just double check that in the contract. Yeah, it needs a barometer on the satellite. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to queue one up like that and have it start out while we're on our way. Okay, rolling out the lunar orbiter with another one with a barometer uh, cooking in the second slot. And looks like this rollout takes 14 hours. Uh, SY change vessel swift 1C. I'm sure that's not important. Okay, we're close to relative inclination target, but not quite there, so I'm trying to get that minimized. Okay, no off plane transfer this time. We're gonna try and aim for it as accurately as possible. And I've got controllers all the way, so. We will have control as long as we have communication. Okay, I'll take this relative inclination. And SAS on. Once it's ready. Throttle is up. Okay, and wow, it's been a while, while since we've had to worry about test flight. I really need to. Uh, I don't think test flight has been updated in a while, and need to have some configurations for the rest of these engines, but we'll go as it is. Here we go. And we're off. Hand over to Smart ASS. Somebody in the comments mentioned, by the way, that uh, persistent rotation doesn't work when SAS is on, so I have to remember that. Uh, thanks for that tip. Uh, I think more than one person probably mentioned it along the way, I just forgot. So this is a test of a new rocket, the Stalwart, and mayhem might occur. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, I did think about replacing the Vanguard stage with uh, just another LRA9, just a single one. I didn't think that was a particularly good idea after looking into it, but that was yet another thing that I thought about. Now in point nine zero, I often had trouble with the decouplers overheating, hoping I'm not going to get that here. 
but we're about to find out because we're carrying these boosters for quite a ways and at quite a high speed. Yep, decoupler overheating. Thing of the past. Now remember, this rocket was designed to carry five tons. We're much less than that, so I'm expecting to have fuel left over. And this will probably be our first multiple-use rocket, unless we get substantially better engines or something that will be obviously cheaper. I mean, something that can carry five tons to orbit is uh, it's a pretty good deal. And conveniently, that's the that's the capacity of the capsule. The capsule says that it can control five tons. So that's the that's the secret reason behind this capacity. Now, of course, our maximum thrust to weight ratio is 4.6-ish with this rocket, so a little bit higher than normal man-rated rockets, or human-rated rockets. So, yeah. But uh, we'll allow that much leeway, I think. If it works. We've got, a very, we've got two very long stages ahead. Maybe I should just keep it to about 24 degrees even though we're gonna have a very large time to apoapsis. One downside of this is it's probably not very good to launch stuff into low, I mean very low orbits. Uh, it probably is a 300 kilometer minimum sort of thing because of its long burn time. That or I have to flatten out very very early and sort of go very severe with it, which is a possibility since it doesn't seem like the decoupler is overheated. The reason I didn't this time is because I was worried about the decouplers overheating. Separation. And ignition. Okay, two vanguards ignited successfully. Very nice. And let's drop the fairing, we're very much high enough. And let's get the antennae out. Yeah, we're going really high this time. Sorry about that, but first test of rocket, I'll refine the I'll refine all the details next time we launch. So about two minutes left in this stage and then we have a five and a half minute stage after this, so that's why we've got the sort of high orbit thing going. We've got the gravioli on here. I'm gonna record perturbation data. Yeah we can send that and fulfill that contract now. We gotta lock the upper tanks just so that nothing gets drawn from them. Well, these definitely won't anyway. Just the uh, just the hydrazine is important. Okay, switching to SAS and set and ignition. Okay, ignition is good. We've got RCS thrusters on here, that's why I wanted to lock the hydrazine up there. We've got hydrazine in here that we can use. Let's continue letting Smart ASS do its trick. And uh, I don't know if we. Uh, and this has gimbling, so I don't know if we really need the RCS on here. That's really just in case we need to orient uh, payloads that are spin stabilized, having the RCS there. Like with the earlier missions. Hmm, time to apoapsis is actually going up, so, uh, yeah, definitely way too steep. Oh, well, that was obvious to begin with, but I didn't need so much time to apoapsis after all. I overdid it. wonder why it says local control instead of uh, giving me the signal delay. This isn't a. This doesn't have local control, does it? Yeah, I don't get that. Okay, well we are in orbit, and I guess I can shut off there. We don't need to have both ends be way high, uh, but uh, of course I could just boost it up using this. But 450 meters per second left over, 45 seconds left to burn time. Definitely has the capacity I wanted. Okay. Uh, we'll retain the stage so that we can use the RCS on here to do the initial lineup. We don't need to waste the payload's fuel. But let me 
Let me make a transfer here. Okay, so what I'm aiming for is a moon periapsis of 500 kilometers, and the reason I'm keeping it that high instead of going lower, which I can, uh, I can go lower than that, is because I want the other stage to remain uh, in orbit around Earth, in a very high orbit around Earth, and thereby help with communication. So this will allow that to happen. And of course, uh, with an inclined orbit like this, hopefully you'll have min minimal further interaction with the moon. Uh, unless it happens to hit over there again. Uh, we could probably uh, adjust its orbit a little bit using its remaining hydrazine in order to ensure that doesn't happen. But that that's the idea, so that uh, this stage will help with communication in the future because it does have enough solar panels to power its core. Okay, so our maneuver is in 11 minutes. Our stage time is almost 8 minutes. So we'll, we'll probably do like uh, five minutes before the node and three minutes after or something like that. And we are over the Gulf of Mexico at the burn. So we will have communication just fine. And despite local control, I want my communication. So let's get a little bit closer to it and then I'll have the previous stage orient us. Okay, this should be good enough. All right, uh, so let's say RCS on, node, and none of this RCS should be used. Yeah, that's all locked. Okay, forget it, forget it. I don't have this kind of time to waste. Okay, now maybe Smart ASS can hold it at that node. No, it can't. Wow. I had it right on the button and pretty much stabilized and it still does this crazy stuff. Forget it, forget it, forget it. Uh, SAS will be fine. Thank you. We're not uh, aiming for a very precise point anyway. Okay. Now it looks stable. Now we'll uh, take that lock off. We'll have uh, fine controls on. Alright. So, separation. And RCS, let's go for full RCS power. Let's check that that's okay. And throttle up. And ignition. Okay, very good. And we should be able to burn this stage out. Okay, we're uh, approaching the maneuver node point, and we're not quite halfway through the burn, so. Looks like I was uh, a little bit too late starting this burn. But I'm sure it'll be alright. Okay, 30 seconds left. Looks like we'll be doing about uh, 25 meters per second with the RCS system. That's planned. I plan to be short of Delta V on the actual stage and to finish it off of RCS for accuracy's sake. Oh, we're drifting though. Okay, as... The thrust gets a little bit unwieldy, it's drifting a bit. Okay, that's it for that. Alright. Hmm. Yep, let's take a look at how it goes. Well, I guess that'll do. Okay, well that's pretty much what I wanted. Now we have to orient for the sun, because otherwise we won't have enough battery life. Let's head on over to the moon. Communication is still going to be a trick because of line of sight issues. Then again, I don't know if it's actually going to tell me that or not. Our orbit seems to be now a crash course. And the fling out, not what I originally wanted. That That's probably because of what we did when we turned around. To face the sun. Okay, we are now in Lunar Sphere of Influence. We still have a connection back, as we should. And now uh, let me bring us off of the crash course. That's That's not for right now, that's for later. Hopefully that's a solid orbit and not one that uh, 
system will occasionally read as an escape trajectory. Okay, that'll do. All right, we want to retain line of sight. Our periapsis, oh, auto saving. Okay, yeah. So over here, let's say I wait until we see Earth again before. Not no, that's not what I wanted to do. Add maneuver before retro burning. We'll be in an elliptical orbit. One in low, one in high, but the low end will be able to get low readings, the high end will be able to get high readings. And that's a good way to go initially. We'll be dumping... Let's, let's dump this section now. Well, no, it could help us orient. It's still got hydrazine in there. Don't actually know how long the RCS system will take to get us into orbit. We have line of sight, so that's good. It should be fine. Let's uh, orient to retrograde and then set. Okay, there's Earth right there, so no problems. Okay, I'm going to turn RCS off temporarily, unlock that tank. Uh, no, uh, let's turn RCS on with fine controls. And now separation. Okay, now we have a signal delay. That's, that's good enough, I guess. Okay, and forward. Getting into orbit. Oh, actually, before I forget, we can fulfill the flyby contract by transmitting some signs, so let's do that. Let's see, micrometeorite detector. Uh, okay, there's nothing there. Temperature? Uh, nothing. Uh, okay, how about the orbital perturbation data? Okay, we've got some different biome than we had before. All right, transmit. Okay, so that's fulfilled, and we got some extra science, and now waiting for orbit, and then the impact. Okay, here we go, periapsis is coming down, apoapsis, in fact, if I cut it right now, I think we will count as being in the proper orbit for the purposes of the contract. Yeah, it's already, it's already fulfilled it. Um, but I'll bring the periapsis down, because we eventually want to fulfill the impactor contract but not before we do some science. Maybe more interesting to have the impact on the Earth-facing side, though. Imagine we have to have some telescopes trained on it to, to do more science, something like that. I'll have to see. We've got uh, quite a bit of our hydrazine left. Okay, let's cut it there and start doing some science. I don't know if uh, recording impact data does anything? Wow, it, okay. Still high over. Yeah, still high over at this altitude. But perturbation data? Ah, still over the Midlands. Okay, well, let's just proceed. Uh, I should get the biome stuff out. So, surface info. Nope, oh, major crater, lunar seas. Okay, stuff. Here. Record perturbation data, transmit. Okay, Lowlands. Okay, transmit. Lunar seas, we've done. It's the major craters that we haven't done. Let's see where we break communication. I wanna see how much it takes to get the apoapsis down and maybe we could uh, get the impact on the earth-facing side. Maybe I should aim for that right now. Yeah, I don't think I can bring the apoapsis all the way down like this. Yep, yeah, I better quit on that. So, uh, we'll, uh, it doesn't say we have to be in communication when we impact, does it? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't say we have to be in communication when we impact, so we won't be. Looks like uh, we don't have enough fuel to make sure of that. So let's just continue gathering some science before we end up crashing this. We'll head to apoapsis and then smash, uh, get the periapsis suborbital. Okay, transmit still high. 
Uh, we don't have any connection at periapsis. So we can't get the low stuff. Farside Basin, too. We've got another surface biome. But we can't get it. Okay, just go to Apoapsis and then we'll retroburn and fulfill that contract. Looks like a crash to me. It should be a very interesting impact. Skimming into this valley here. Smash up against that wall there. Okay, at least we got the sound effect. Alright, so, and that contract. Come on. Okay, uh, oh, it won't let me go there. Okay, well, uh, let's go back to Space Center. Okay, our funding looks great, and... Oh boy, okay. And Lunar Impact is fulfilled. Okay, so all is good. We've got science, and I'll decide about distributing the the funds to my upgrade points in the next episode. I'll try and remember to do that. But right now I just want to check up on the satellite, the the other stage that we have and reorient it to catch some solar rays. Okay, well this still hasn't escaped lunar sphere of influence, so let me time warp a bit and get it out there and then we'll see about its orientation and make sure it has electric charge. What's well, facing the sun directly? I think we need to uh, retract some antennae. Uh, still not enough. Well, just goes to show you can't trust me on stuff like this. Now, uh, that's that's when it's not time warping. Obviously, once it oh maybe hmm okay this doesn't have a low power mode. I thought it did. Okay, so it's not that kind of thing. It does have local control, but I need that like not at all. Um, I don't really need to control this, do I? I could just shut it off. Maybe I should just shut it off. And then this, will it still provide communication though when I shut it off? I don't know. If you guys know that, please tell me. Uh, I want to know whether if I turn this off, it will still provide communication support and relay. Okay, I, I won't do anything right now just in case I do something to hinder it. But yeah, if we shut it off, that will be good. Then we'll have a communication satellite in a very interesting orbit. Looking at this though, uh, when it's out here, maybe I should keep an extra antenna open. I mean, we know that two is enough uh, within the lunar orbit, but that is actually double the distance. Not too sure I'll still have communication there. But anyway, uh, I, I won't touch this right now, and I want to know whether I can just shut off the probe core if all I want is communication relay. All right. So anyway, we've done quite a bit uh, this time. We have f fulfilled a satellite contract. We have fulfilled a contract for Lunar Orbit, Lunar Impactor, and Lunar Flyby. So lots of stuff done. And yeah, we will be proceeding to bigger and better things uh, quicker than expected maybe. Because I thought maybe we'll have some trouble with the new rocket. But the new rocket turned out fine. The stalwart is indeed stalwart. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.